What's going on guys? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today we have a very special guest here on the channel for a project that I've been following for some time. Many of you out there have been keeping up with and many of you might have known that it's recently come out with a huge announcement and that is the fact of its public launch. Guys, today we are here with Lehman, the co-founder of Hashgraph. Lehman, thank you very much for coming on. Really appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Appreciate it. So today we want to talk over a few different things here. First and foremost, as many of you out there might know, Hashgraph is an alternative to blockchain technology. It's been a big contester in the sense of scale ability, uh, being Byzantine fault tolerant. Uh, one of the big things that many people don't understand, Bitcoin is not. So because of this, we have a lot of interesting things to look forward to in Hashgraph. And I want to go ahead and start off seeing as many people know about Hashgraph, talking a little bit about what happened here at the event today. So do you want to talk a little bit about it? Sure. So Hashgraph is something that we have had for a couple of years that allows you to do consensus ledgers, you know, distributed ledgers. But it's, um, it's permission for the last couple of years. And the obvious thing you want to do if you have a really good ledger is not just permission, which is important, but you also want to do a public ledger. Tonight we announced Hedera. Hedera is the Hedera Hashgraph Council is the public ledger built on Hashgraph. And so we were able to announce that. We were able to have partners announcing what they're doing with us. We were now able to announce the nonprofit foundation, the Distributed Ledger Foundation, and the first initiative, the free and fair voting initiative that they're doing. Uh, we had quite a bit to announce. It was a lot to take in. You had practically anyone from the team out there on the Hashgraph team who's coming out and attacking all types of different fronts here, guys. I mean, if you go back and watch through the entire event that I was very fortunate enough to sit at the front row of and really get to see, um, you got to see talks of new governance systems, talks about new levels of scalability to tens, if not hundreds of thousands of transactions, and really a good use of sharding and other scaling techniques in Hashgraph. And I got to say, it really does define what you guys are calling the fourth generation uh, cryptocurrency technology. So I think this is really, really awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks. So I want to go ahead and spend some time here to talk about some of the potential with Hashgraph because I think more than anything, a lot of people are really carried away by the scalability of Hashgraph. And I know I was too, and why it was so urgent for you guys to come out with something for the public to see and where people could start building on top of. So for example, where Bitcoin and Ethereum are lacking in scalability, sometimes stuck to single digit transactions on core blockchain technology, what are some of the things we can start doing now with Hashgraph's technology? So, um, as Gabe said at the end, he's able to use this for his thing. We're using this cryptocurrency in order to do things to use his amazing system. <laughs> no, it was incredible. It's amazing. Um, and so you can do things that need the, the high throughput like that. I start off by talking about credit cards, mm -hmm. but you know that can just be one piece of the system. You can go very big. And so you can do something like that. I talked about something like a stock market. Often that's huge transaction. Massive uh, amounts. Massive. Yeah. Uh, and then, just things like you could build a game, an MMO that is a distributed ledger where every move you make is an, a transaction in the distributed ledger. We haven't been able to talk about that in the past, mm. right? If you're doing seven a second, you probably don't want to have an MMO where everyone in the universe can only do one seven moves per second. <laughs> uh, that's probably not going to work. People start complaining about the lag. <laughs> they, they do start complaining about the lag at that point. So I mean, it's just it's enabling new kinds of things that you might not have been able to do before. Um, but the important thing is that we don't just wait fast. We have to keep the security. We need to be ABFT as well. And we want to go to sharding, but you want to keep the ABFT and the ABFT in your sharded system. And so you know, all these things work together. And so any one piece is not important. It's, it's how all the pieces fit together. And then if you want to go to a public thing, then the governance matters and some of these other issues matter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a big package. No, exactly. I mean, we were talking about a lot of the limitations of current cryptocurrencies, not only in scalability, but lack of governance. Uh, you see, for example, the past year, Bitcoin's community was going through a constant fight of which one's the real Bitcoin, which network is the real one we should, you know, go into the label and what's the right path to take it. And I think we're getting more and more important towards the topic of governance. So I'm really big on that. But I got to tell you, Lynn, the really cool thing about this, I think, is the fact of the scalability, because I'm a big fan of the idea of peer-to-peer -peer digital cash and the fact that you've gotten past the level of credit card and debit card processors and you got to the standard of tens of hundreds of thousands of transactions now we're talking about tracking games in a decentralized manner I mean that the possibilities are endless for this yeah you're exactly right um, it really is a game changer and the funny thing of course is that high throughput implies low transaction fees mm -hmm. because it, and not doing proof of work having cheap computers run it implies low transaction fees Essentially, a transaction fee is the cost of running the computer divided by how many transactions. Mm -hmm. So if you have lots of transactions and not a whole lot of cost, you have low transaction fees, which allows us to do things like micropayments. That's actually a big deal. 
And so the throughput, the scalability, is actually very important. And that you're not having to do mining rigs and things. That also keeps the price down. Yep, so with all this functionality of micropayments and how the currency will be used itself, there's a lot of value built from behind it, from my understanding, for all the different use cases it can be used for on top of this protocol and this platform. Exactly. And so what I find so exciting is that all the interesting stuff is at layers we're not even doing. Mm -hmm. Our community is going to build those layers. Yeah. We're just doing the plumbing. <laughs> and that's, that's nice. But now we're starting to see what people can do with good plumbing. And that's what I'm excited about. And you know, Gabe showed what you can do with this kind of thing. I mean, it's incredible. We yeah. saw so, systems, yeah, where there was tracking of all the vehicles in a major city, and not just in a major city. He zoomed out and he was showing how through the systems they're going to use, and they're going to be using Hashgraph, um, Hashgraph technology along with it. They're going to get to the point where they can track every single uh, car that is a public service uh, transport car, uh, every single airplane, every single thing that you can track, almost in a sense like Skynet. I think some of us would put it in, in the sense where you could track so much information all at once. Well, what's interesting is you can start doing disintermediation mm -hmm. of buyers and sellers of transportation. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen companies starting to do that, and now they can disintermediate those companies. And you can actually make it very cheap. This is the interesting thing. When you start having truly large-scale ledgers, it allows humans to connect to humans in ways that they can't before. You can have very efficient, very fast, and very cheap and trustworthy markets that don't have to be set up. And so you can have, instead of having one company that matches buyers and sellers of driving services, you can kind of disintermediate and have just the drivers selling their services to the buyers almost, almost you know, with no middleman, that kind of a thing. This kind of changes the nature of economies. Mm -hmm. If you can really have ledgers at that scale, you can start having people interacting with each other directly in ways that maybe you didn't, there was too much friction to do before. Exactly, so in the case of something like Airbnb or Uber, where it seems very peer-to-peer -peer in a sense, but there's still that middleman, with this system we're now to a scale where we can cut out the middleman and truly for once make peer-to-peer -peer digital transactions between two parties. It's an interesting thought. Yeah. So what happens in the future when everything, every industry can start working that way? I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. <laughs> well, Lehman, I mean, this is just absolutely fantastic. So going forward, I don't want to hold you up for too long, but I'm very interested to hear some of the ambitions. I know you guys established the foundation. You guys are going to be launching this entire platform to the public. There's all the resources you need, the white paper online, tons of resources you can dive into, the SDK to start developing on top of. What's kind of the long-term goals here? Okay, so there's a lot of steps you go through, but we're already building the developer community, and the long-term goal is to absolutely build this developer community better, I mean bigger, grow to be massive, and we want to do everything we can to help them, and we have developer advocates that are working with our developers. Um, plus, since we run Solidity, we have all those developers in some sense already have developed for us, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice, but we want to have uh, lots of different things, and, and also, when you're developing for something faster, then you, have, you can think of whole new kinds of things you can do that you couldn't do before. And so we want our developers to start thinking, well, how can they push the envelope? What can you do with this? Like I said, we're just doing plumbing. What can they do? <laughs> yep. And Once. so that's the long term. Is think and of course our original vision was we want to have shared worlds that are all interconnected and we want to have a public ledger as part of that to connect them to and this is what this does. So in the long term, the potential is developers are going to tell us what the potential is. They're going to tell us what the end up where we end up. It's really the max yeah. the maximum capacity is creativity in that sense because yes. and I remember when I watched um the documentary talking about Hashgraph Mike Maloney did. Yeah. You really did talk about this vision of open worlds and everything. And I know so many people, they learn about Hashgraph's tech and they're like, when is this going to get in the hands where I can make it my own? And you could see that vision. I think many people had the foresight that you guys would eventually do this, really bringing it into what you call phase two of this entire journey. And like, Lehman, I gotta say, thank you very much for doing this and you know working so hard over all these years to solve the math equation that you worked so hard to find and what was nagging you for so long and to bring something that's gonna bring so much optimism and so much curiosity into this space. So, anyway. Well, thank you. I, we've appreciated all the support of people like you and everybody else, all the interest. People have been asking us to have this night for two years. Now we've had this <laughs> night, and I'm just happy that people are excited about well, it. You should be proud of it. Thank yeah, you again thank for you. coming on. I well, really appreciate it. And if you guys want any information on all of the new news, you can go to Hashgraphs, uh, Hashgraph.com, I would assume still. There's all the information yes. on there on the new token and everything, the new platform that they're launching, where you can start to become a part of this revolution comparative to traditional blockchain technology. It excites me. It excites so many other people. And to see that you guys already have such a large community, it speaks volumes in regards to where this is going to go. So can't 
wait to see it over the next few months. I mean, really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll take y'all. Take care, guys. I'll talk to y'all later, and I'll see you guys in the next video.